probably be more interesting to put this out here just a little bit. So let's do that. So let's do that. So here's our test of our script. We click this object. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Multiple Dimensions, Part 16, Listening. In today's episode, we did some reflection and then focused down on sound scripts. And you just heard us play one here. This little object has... We put the bass and the choir sound, which if you remember what those are, the bass ones is this one here. This one. The choir one's up here. And in our in our first pass, just each one of these chain links has one sound in it, and when you click it, it plays. But what we did with this one is we researched our scripts and then we put the two of them in a row. So this is called sound cueing and it plays the sound and then it plays the second sound. And you just heard us do that. And then we tried to research it and we tried putting three sounds in a row and it didn't work. And then when we finally went back and looked at our reference, it said, guess what? It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> So then we decided to go back and look at all of our, um, this is the, these are all the sound scripts that are available for us to work with. And we used a few of them. So we said we need to get a little more organized and we made ourselves a reference table here. For example, the sound cueing thing right here, uh, we found the note. It only two sounds can be cued per prim. And then there are sounds that are attached and sounds that are unattached. So um, we're using trigger sound here, which, uh, which, which plays unattached. So it's not attached to the object. But if we had used a different command called the play sound, uh, it would, and then we had had something that was moving the object around, you would, we would hear the sound moving around. So now that's an important, so we learned some important vocabulary, attached and unattached. Uh, we also learned that uh, whatever sound you have, you can either have the sound inside the primitive object. Here we have bass one and choir one, or you can just leave them outside. See, those sounds are here as well, uh, choir one and bass one and so forth. So if we were trying to make this thing something we could give a copy of to people, we want to make sure it has a copy of the sound inside it when we give it to them. We think either that or we don't have to do that. It'll, it'll still find it. It'll still find it and play it, I think. We'll have to test that. So we, there's a whole whole slew of interesting things to look into. So that's another idea. Research whether research whether a UUID sound has permissions attached when included in a script, but not a prim. So that would be interesting. So, 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 that's, that's today's stream. We don't usually have stuff to play for you. Well, we usually have stuff to play for you. And we just kind of already did that. This is kind of cool that we were able to do this. That's choir one. And 
its base one. And the difference is here we were triggering them one at a time. And we were overlaying them. So what we're trying to get to is the ability to take a composition that's like a minute 40, which means it has 10, 10 second pieces and play the whole minute 40 in a row. And we're kind of up against the wall saying you can only you can only play something up to 20 seconds at the moment. So that's our other idea is to uh, research ways to cue more than one sound in a sequence. Also, now that we're kind of getting our hands around this, perhaps make some new test sounds to work with based on our newest composition. So thank you for your time, attention, curiosity, and interest. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Do come back, do take care, and do keep on streaming.